Hey, welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy. I'm Rod. And today we're going to take a look at Viceroy. This is put out by Hobby World and Mayday Games. Plays one to four players in roughly 45 to 60 minutes. So let's take a look and see what you get in the box. Let's do it. All right, so this is what you get in the box with Viceroy. Why don't you tell us about the components? Sure. Uh, it's a card game. So basically the one thing that you're going to get plenty of is cards. Uh, how many cards were there? I don't know. A hundred or so. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing that's really neat is that each one comes with its own artwork. So nothing is duplicated. So that's really nice. The cards are a good size. They're a different size. You know, they're kind of the square rather than the rectangle. Uh, the artwork is great. Uh, there's a lot of... Um, images on there and they're clear there's lots of colors everything's mm -hmm. very very clear with them uh, the cards are it's pretty thin but it's made of like the cloth stuff so it's uh, it's actually a, uh, I think they'll hold up pretty well uh, the, of course you have the tokens the tokens are nice and thick you yeah, have like the screen good. blockers which give you the uh, explanation of what the pieces do and so on so I think all in all, all the tokens are nice and thick. I think all, all in all, it's, um, it's very well made. I mean, for the price, I think you get a lot with this. I mean, out of the right. box, even without the extras like the gems and the play mat, you still get just a ton of these tokens and uh, the play mats. I don't know. There's a lot of games, uh, Splendor, where you, <laughs> you for the same price, you just don't get near the amount of stuff that you do with this one. So. Of course, it gives you the scoring uh, yeah. paper and it gives you plenty of that. I think I agree with you. I think all in all, because what I really like is I think the artwork is actually outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, so I think each piece has, you know, each card's an individual and uh, it stands out really nice. Yeah, I agree. So uh, the rules to Viceroy are pretty simple. The only thing I wish that they would have done was maybe put some bolded text so that I could find something, you know, like, well, what does this do and how do I do that? You know, I had to look through a little bit to figure that out. But um, once yeah, I got through there. It's small there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, for the most part, it, it, it was pretty easy to understand. And then, like, the overall is a pretty good rule book, so... Okay, so let's talk about how you actually play Viceroy. So this is like a pyramid building game, right? So you're gonna be um, buying cards through an auction phase, paying to play those down onto the board, and then you're trying to figure out the best way and the best time to play some of these cards. The rules actually say at the beginning of the game, it's best to go for cards that are going to give you uh, gems, infinite gems, um, rewards like that. And so it's you're basically trying to build an engine to get you going. That way, the higher up, the cards are worth more. So um, it, it's basically two phases of the game. There's an auction phase where you're going to be buying a card, and then a development phase where you're going to be paying to put those cards out. So at the beginning, they're going to put four cards out onto the table, and you're going to pick. So there's uh, four different gem colors. So there's blue, red, green, and yellow. And so you're going to be taking a gem of your color. So whichever card you want, you're going to bid one gem. And so it's not whoever has the most gems gets that card, but everybody uh, bids one gem and so you put it out on the middle and then you reveal and it shows which card uh, that you're going to buy. You can talk openly so you're saying I want the green one, somebody else says I want the green one too and so you could fight over that. The catch is let's say that me and Rod both put out yellow gems if we both put out yellow gems and there's only one card there, we both lose our gems and we will go on to a second auction phase. If we're still stubborn, which we have yeah. been, and we say, no, I want that yellow card, we could bid yellow again, but we're going to keep on losing that. Um, in subsequent rounds, the cards are going to be pushed up. So let's say that these two cards were purchased that round and then these two cards were left. In the next round, they would go up and new cards would then come out onto the table. If we both bid yellow again, we could have the option to choose. He'd say, I want the top one. Okay, I like the one that came out. I'll take this one. Or we could still be stubborn and say, no, I both want that one. And then we would both lose out. The auction, there's three stages to the auction or three auctions that happen. If you lose a gem on all three auctions, then they kind of give you a buy and you get to pick up three 
gems to uh, kind of make up for what. If you ever want to pass, you can pass at the very beginning. So let's say that I don't, I know that I don't have any gems or I can't buy anything or I don't want anything. I could pass on the very first auction and get three gems of my choice. That's kind of how the auction phase works. You can only buy one card per round or per turn. So I get one card on that turn. After that's over, then we go into development phase where you can, you can build up to three cards on a round. So I can only buy one, but then I can play up to three. So to play a card is pretty simple. Basically, you're going to pay the cost of the level that you're on. So if I'm on the first level here, I'm going to be paying one red gem. If I'm on the second level, then I would have to pay a yellow and a red, and it goes down. So if I build on the fourth level here, I'd have to pay a blue, two yellows, and a red to buy that card. When you pay to place a card, you get whatever reward is on the level that you're on. So this one, if I paid the red, I would get a uh, three victory points. If I build it on the third level here, I would just get the science token. I wouldn't get everything below it. So your only reward is whatever level that you're on. So that's very helpful. If like say this one, I'm on the fourth level, I would get 10 victory points for that. So maybe I wanna save this one until I get to the fourth level. So basically I'm gonna be buying cards and then paying to develop them and building a pyramid up. And so there's all kinds of ways to earn points in this game. I don't wanna go through all of them, but basically you can earn points um, if, I don't know if you can see this or not, but basically if I uh, build all three of these cards and that gem that's made, the circle that's made, if that matches color, I could get points for that. I can get points for scrolls, magic scrolls. I can get points if I build sets of tokens. Um, there's a way to attack people, and then but you can have a shield to block their attack. Um, there's combo points, so for every shield or magic scroll I have, now it's worth five extra points instead of just the regular points, stuff like that. And cards will give you abilities that certain cards are doubled or something. If you have certain sequence of things, you get more points. It reminds me a lot of Seven Wonders in the scoring system. Definitely. So if you played Seven Wonders, by the time it gets to the end, you start to see your points exponentially growing. Exactly. So there are law cards, character cards, and law cards. And so you can only get law cards uh, through abilities that come out through the character cards, or at the beginning of the game, you get some law cards. These don't cost you to play, so that's nice. And then you get the ability that's written on the card. And law cards can do all kinds of stuff. Like you said, you could trade places with a card. You could steal a token from someone else you could get free gems you could get points based off of the cards that are around you there's all kinds of different things that the law cards allow you to do so it plays out over 12 rounds basically there's 48 of these cards that you're going to go through when that runs out then the game is over and then you go through that's why they have the uh, the pad here so that you can go through and it tells you all the ways that you can earn points and so you just go down the line here and you add up your points and then whoever has the most victory points wins the game now there's a lot of extra rules there's ways to paint circles with leftover gems and there's some other things that go into it uh, but basically that's the idea so you're going to be building up your pyramid trying to build up your pyramid of power and exponentially kind of gaining points so rod why don't you tell us what your thoughts on viceroy so Viceroy reminds me of Seven Wonders a lot, um, more so than Splendor, mm -hmm. which we've heard the kind of the, you know the, the closest Comparison. of those two games. Um, enjoyed the game very much. It played nicely. Um, the rules are not complicated. What's mm -hmm. complicated is knowing uh, every little color and every little thing that you can get points for, and that just takes a little bit of time. And I think after going through uh, you know like one full game, then you're pretty much good to go. Yeah, I think that's when it clicks. The first time I play, this is definitely a game for me that I played. And the first time I played, I said, let's play a game because now I get it. Right. You know, And so now you're starting to go back and you start to think about things a little differently, making sure you get gems early on instead of being broke the whole time. You know, the, Like you said, it, it definitely plays where you want to play again and again. So. And I think this is a very good entry-level game in one aspect. But in the other aspect, uh, it, when, when a new person that hasn't played games like this uh, tries to play at the beginning, they're probably going to think it's going to be a little overwhelming. But after they get into it and get to play it, they'll realize how simple the game is. But I do think it's a really nice little game. Yeah, you know? I agree. I just, I just think it works. There's there's not a whole lot in this game that when you play it, you're like, I don't really like that. There's this cool kind of give and take where like, I want to buy that car, but I don't have the gems. And then you're, I don't know, there's those some of those difficult situations. And then the battle, the auction phase sure. is very unique. Um, instead of, I'm just going to hoard up all the blue, uh, Austin. And uh, that doesn't really benefit you because, uh, you know, all you're going to be able 
to buy are blue things. And so, anyways, it's really cool how that auction phase works along with the building phase. So, and again, like with the base game, I would just definitely make sure to get the mat itself. The rest of the, I mean, this isn't needed because you'd have tokens for it, but. Uh, this right here definitely is uh, something that I think you need to have. You can play one player with this, which is really cool. And you could play two players with a virtual player if you wanted. So there's a way to simulate somebody else auctioning against you in the game, which is kind of nice. So even if you're just playing with two people, it still feels like there's more people playing. Now, there is just one, I just want to give one uh, little knock to the game. Um, uh, when it comes to theme on it, it, it that part doesn't really exist. Uh, it, it, so like with uh, Seven Wonders, when you're, when you're getting stuff, you're getting uh, what the, the different artifacts and things like that. You know, you're building lumber, wood. You feel like you're, you're actually doing something with this. But with this one right here, it just never felt like we were in the theme so much. Um, other than that, again, it's, it's a very good game. Sure, the artwork is phenomenal yeah. on it. Every single card is different, but I will agree that the theme kind of falls there. That that's okay. where it, it kind of goes to, um, other than I'm collecting a magic scroll and a science token. You know, you don't really get much out of that. So, At the end of our reviews, we like to do a one-die rating. Should you buy it, play it, or hate it? Uh, green means go buy this game and add it to your collection. White means maybe you wouldn't buy it, but you definitely play it. And then red means you wouldn't buy it and you wouldn't play it because you hate it. <laughs> so we get our die All right. and reveal. Oh! All right. <laughs> so we got a green and a white. So tell us why you gave it a white. Um, well, it's, it's, it's not my type of game, but I do enjoy playing these games every once in a while. So, I mean, I definitely, would, if it's there, I'm going to play it. Uh, I do think that uh, Seven Wonders may be a better game of the two, but I do like this game a lot. So I mean, um, it would be—it was close to but to buy. Believe me, it, it, it is—it is a good purchase if you do buy it. Um, but it, it's white for me. Okay. I gave it a green. I like everything about this game, right? So I just love being able, every time I play, based off the cards that are put out there, I have to kind of change my strategy on what I'm going to do. And so am I going to go straight victory point? Am I going to go for sets? Am I going to go for uh, attacking people? You know, am I going to go for scrolls this time or matching my circles? I don't know. I just really enjoyed that. I like being able to change it every time. The law cards just add a lot of flavor to the game because I never know what I'm gonna get and I always wanna get more because I think that they could totally change the game. There's a lot, the higher up you get in the game that makes it cooler because you know one card now that at the bottom really wasn't worth that much, if I played on the top level, all of a sudden it's worth 12 points or I could, because of a law card, I can exchange this and now one that was on the third level now becomes top level 12 points, there's just, a lot of cool kind of combos that you can do with the game. So for me, this was great. My wife loves this game. So I know that anytime she wants to play, I could pull this one out, add a virtual player in. It feels like there's more than just me and her. I just really liked it. So but anyways, so that's our review of Viceroy. And uh, we do appreciate uh, Mayday sending us this game. As always, that's awesome. And uh, check it out online. See if this is a game that you'd like to purchase. And as always, uh, visit your local hobby shop. Mm -hmm.